When uh, an organization uh, uh, wants to run a clinical trial, they have to determine how they're going to measure the efficacy of that drug. And that's called an endpoint. And the FDA requires typically that, F, that endpoint to be either how the patient functions, feels, or survives. In some cases, that's very difficult to determine, like heart disease or kidney disease. Uh, you don't want to wait till the patient dies to determine that you have heart disease or, or have kidney disease. So sometimes they use a biomarker like cholesterol to determine heart disease or glomerular filtration rate for kidney disease. These are called surrogate biomarkers. It's, uh, very, it is very difficult to have a surrogate endpoint qualified um, by the FDA and the EMA. It takes a tremendous amount of data and large evidence because the decision, the consequences of getting the wrong decision is so critical. So what the FDA has done is has, uh, designated some biomarkers as reasonably likely surrogates. In that case, they can be used in an accelerated um, pathway to have the drug uh, measured using the surrogate biomarker and then have a follow-up study to determine that it was effective using a currently accepted endpoint. In, uh, in Polycystic Kidney Disease Outcome Consortium, we worked with the FDA to get total kidney volume designated as a reasonably likely surrogate. That allows organizations to use it as an endpoint in the clinical trial and then and get the drug approved based on that and then they have to follow up uh, in a post-marketing study to, to provide the evidence using a currently accepted endpoint.